Okay, I'm going to show you three different ways to make this. The animation of zooming in and out, or zooming out and in. There's three ways of doing this, three easy ways of doing this. So first, open up the media pool, grab a piece of footage that you want to make this effect. Let's grab this right here. I'll slap that onto my timeline and I'll close the media pool there. So here's the clip. Oops, wrong one. So there it is. And let's see, I'm going to cut this where the cat is out of frame. There we go. Okay. So we have our clip. It's an 11 second clip. And once you have your clip, we're going to first do this the easiest way possible. And this is the same way that you can do it in Final Cut or in iMovie. If you go to Inspector in the top right corner, you will see this dynamic zoom right here. And this is disabled. It's not even turned on. So go ahead and turn that on by giving this red button a click or the gray button and it'll turn red and that indicates that it is on. And by the way, this is something that I mentioned in my previous video. So go ahead and watch that just to get some insights on shortcuts and the inspector. So we have the dynamic zoom turned on and we can go ahead and watch this over. Wait, what's going on? You might be wondering. Well, this is the thing. It's not going to show you the dynamic zoom just yet. You have to do one more thing before you can actually see the animation. So go to this icon right here where it says transform There's a drop down and then you're going to click on dynamic zoom. Perfect. Easy enough, right? Let's go to home, which will take you to the beginning of the clip. And by home, I mean the home button on your keyboard if you have that. But yeah, go to the begin beginning of the clip. And now we'll see this animation in action. You can tell it's doing a movement there. It's zooming out from being zoomed in. So it's pretty cool, right? It's automatic and it lasts throughout the whole video, the whole clip. So that's really cool, really, really cool. What you can also do is if you go over to the dynamic zoom in the inspector again, you can swap the two different starting points there or, or the start and end point. You can swap the start and end point. So I had it zoom out and now I'm gonna have it zoom in like so. It's pretty cool, right? It's so easy to use this. And so just to make it easier for you to understand when you see the red and green outline, the green outline is your starting point and the red outline is the end point of the animation. Now you can also adjust both of these different rectangles, the red one and the green one. I can make that one smaller and I can make this one smaller as well. Let's see what that looks like. Pretty weird, right? It, it's it's a lot tighter. So we could do that, or we could even swap that out and see how that looks. I kind of like that better actually, just because it's so tight at the beginning, but you get the point, it's pretty cool. Now I could even extend this all the way out like that, even past the viewer, uh, the frame itself, it can go past the frame. And so you adjust it to make it faster or slower and just to adjust your framing. And so the last thing that you can change to the dynamic zoom is the actual ease in and out. You can make it linear, you can make it ease in, or you could just make it ease out, or you could ease it in and out however you choose. And so you are probably wondering if I were to trim this clip, my clip, would the dynamic zoom be affected? Would it kind of go bonkers, you know? Yes, it does. So to fix that, when that happens, click on the on button and turn it off and then click that back on and then it should be fine. So you're basically resetting it that way. I recommend doing that instead of clicking on this reset button because that just will reset 
your actual adjustments, your framing. If you turn it off and on, it doesn't affect your framing. So just be careful with that. Remember to do it that way and not the reset button. The reset button is really just if you want to start over, but we don't want to start over. We just want to make sure that it lasts the whole entire time and it doesn't like wig out because we trimmed the clip. So next we're going to go and animate this another way. And this is going to be more steps, but you have a little bit more control over it. So go ahead and turn off the dynamic zoom and then go back over to this drop down and then click on transform. So we're going to make basically the same animation, but we're going to use the zoom parameter in the, in the inspector on the transform specifically. So click on this icon, the diamond. When you click on that, it turns red. Okay. You set a keyframe right there. If you don't know what a keyframe is, if you're new to editing, because this video is for beginners, basically what it means is that it sets a point at which it will start to animate or have a motion to it as soon as you make your second keyframe like i will do here right now i'll make the keyframe for right about here actually and now what i will do so this icon is now gray right so that's gray there's not a keyframe there right now but, but I'll click on it just now and there is a keyframe and then I'll zoom in to like 1.23. That's good enough, right? And now I can click on this arrow and it takes me to the first one and it's at one. So what the keyframe does is it sets that animation to basically do the same thing that, that, that the, the dynamic zoom did. And so keyframing, like I said, will allow motion, allow it to move on your keyframes. So if we go to the beginning keyframe, the first keyframe, and then press play, it does that motion, a similar motion to what we did before. So that's really nice, right? So if you are very new to editing, keyframing lets you animate anything at all. I could animate the positioning. I can show you that real quick. So how about when it zoomed all the way in, it's moved over to the left a little bit, okay? But when it's zoomed out, it's actually center. So let's go ahead and do that. And you can see it's moving over more to the left. So you can use keyframes to animate, okay? That's what that does. Um, if you are more advanced in editing, sorry that you had to listen to that. You already know all about keyframes and you probably got bored. And if you're still watching, then thank you. I do want to show you one more way to animate because there is one more way to do exactly what I just made. So let's go ahead and reset this by clicking on that master reset button. And by the way, I did mention these little shortcuts or tricks in my previous video, if you wanna go check that out. But now, like I said, let's go and do it one more way. There's one way that I like to do uh, pretty often actually. So go into Fusion, okay? Which is gonna be this icon down here to the right of the other icon that we were just on. So this is the edit page, go into Fusion by clicking on that button. And then go ahead and click on this icon right here. It's the transform. When you click on that, this will basically give you the same parameters that you had before on the edit page in the transform right here, right? It's called transform here and it's called transform here. What do you know? Okay, cool. So what we can do is go to frame zero. And by the way, if you're new to resolve or to editing at all, this might look very scary. So just follow along very carefully. You don't have to know much about what this interface is. You don't have to know a whole lot. Just follow step by step and you'll get the same exact effect that we just did. So we went to frame zero. You can tell when you look at this number right here and when you look at this number, okay, it's clearly at zero. It's at the very beginning and now click on the diamond right here where it says size. This is the scale, AKA the zoom on the transform in the edit page, okay? 
So that's the same exact parameter. And so then we will go to, let's say frame 60 or whatever frame you want to do really. And now I'll click on that same diamond icon. It'll turn red so that you know it's selected and working, it's enabled. And now we will uh, zoom this in a little bit. Let's go to like say 1.23. That might be equivalent to what we just did. So 1.23, right? That's what our animation will take us to. That's what the zoom will take us to. So the laptop and the cat are more in frame. So now let's go back to frame zero, press play, and you can see in the viewer that it's zooming in the way that we want it to, just like before. That's really nice, right? Isn't that great? I like it a lot. I love it. So it's really the same exact thing that you would do on here. Okay, but the benefit of doing it in Fusion is it's just easier to control it. It's easier to remove this animation, to remove anything that we just did. And by remove, I mean like basically disconnect it from the video itself. If we want to make this video normal and not zoom in like we just did, all you really have to do is one of two things. You can do two different things, but here's the first thing. First thing you can do is just disconnect that, disconnect that by clicking on this right side of the arrow where the blue will show up, click on that, and now we can move it up. And now we can just connect this back up to media out and it's back to normal, okay? It is back to normal. So you don't have to worry about it anymore. The other thing you can do, if you were to undo, you can bring it back in there and have it connected again. But what you can also do is click on or, or press the shortcut keys on your keyboard, control P. If you do control P or command P, if you're on a Mac, that will disable this node, that effect. So now you can, you can see that it's still not actually doing the animation because it is disabled. That's what this uh, grayness is indicating. So it's just easy to basically prevent it from working, from, from being active, so to speak. Um, and the other cool thing about doing it in here as well is if you go into spline in the top right corner here, click on that, and then click on this size box right here, which will basically allow you to select the size parameter and then cl uh, click Control F. That's what I just clicked. Or click on the button here, the arrows, zoom to fit. And now just click anywhere on here, except for like the line. Click on, press Control A, okay? That will highlight these and then press the keyboard uh, button S. Press S on the keyboard and that will smoothen out your curves. See that? So that's smooth, right? Right there. There you go. Now let's bring it back to normal. How do you do that? Click anywhere on this area. Control A or Command A. And then this right here, linear, click on that. Boom. Okay. And now we'll play it again. It looks different, right? It looks and feels different. So notice how this is linear, right? And then this is smooth. So that's the same thing that we did before, but we did the shortcut. Control A to zoom to fit. And then we did the S to do this same exact thing, smooth, okay? So you could do that, or you could actually press on these icons. It's easier to do the shortcuts though. So go ahead and mess around with that a little bit, you know, just kind of get practice in and do it over and over again. But also, I just want to point out, this stuff is the same exact thing as what's in the dynamic zoom. It's like literally the same thing pretty much, but you have more control over it in the fusion fusion page. This has way more control because you can make your keyframes wherever you want and you can smoothen out your curves however you want to smoothen it out the way that it looks right now, or you can make it straight, whatever you want to do. Um, but 
like an easy way to remember of what it does is by looking at that ease in and out is right there okay or linear and if you go into fusion you can say you can see that it says linear right here so it does the same thing you know it's the same exact stuff but one thing has more control over the other or more flexibility so it's nice knowing that there's three different ways of doing so so let's recap real quick okay so what you can do for a zoom animation is click on dynamic zoom you can choose if you want it to be linear ease in ease out or ease in and out we'll do ease in and out why not and then click on this drop down go to dynamic zoom to actually see your framing for when it starts and finishes and then you can swap the start and finish or the begin and end if you want it to begin when it's tight or if you want it to begin when it's more wide um and if you want to trim go ahead and do that but remember to turn off the dynamic zoom and turn it back on if you want it to get back to normal if you don't want it to be messed up because it will mess up and then you're good to go now if you don't want it at all you can always reset the whole thing and now another way to do an animation is to go up to the zoom right here so let's go to the very beginning of the clip Click on the diamond, set a keyframe, set another keyframe at 32 seconds. Sure, why not? And then click on that again. And now we'll zoom in a little bit. And then remember to go to the drop down and go back to transform. And now you can see, ooh, that's very zoomed in. Let's zoom that out a little bit more. Let's go to like right about there. Okay. And so now we have that keyframe at 1.14 zoom. And then we have the first keyframe at one, which is this, the, the normal one, the normal uh, zoom. And now we play that and bingo, look at that. So now we'll reset that and then we'll go back into fusion. And then again, let me delete that and redo this whole thing one more time for you. You can click on this transform button right here. And then you can go to frame zero, click on the size diamond icon right here and then click on or, or scrub to let's say 60 and then you can move this a little bit like that and there you go you set your keyframes and it will now zoom in and it's linear okay this is linear as you can see it's straight it's not smooth but you can make it smooth by clicking on this guy smooth okay if you don't like the smooth you can always go back and go to the linear click on the linear right there there you go perfect so that's how you do that animation there's three different ways and really they all work pretty well you know what i mean um some of them work better than others depending on what you're trying to do and uh yeah just uh mess around with it see what you like best Hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I'll be sure to answer them to the best of my ability. And in the next video, I'm going to show you three different ways to use a text, to put text on the screen and animate it however you want. And I will see you guys next time.